Hello there, and welcome back to another off-stream episode of Dwarf Fortress. I'm Wojess, and today I'm thinking I'm finally going to start building that tavern I've imagined here in the center of my Great Hall. It's still a bit of a disorganized mess in here, but I've made some- I've made some plans, made some plans, and, you know, I've- I think we can get to it. I've marked this area, I've designated it for mining, so that way we can expand this awfully busy storage area. So we can begin moving things from this stockpile that just exists here as a temporary measure elsewhere. Last time we worked on our closed slash open water loop. And while we are taking care of this, we can monitor the progress of this once and for all to confirm it has worked. But the brook is now unfrozen, water is rushing back in, and so let's get started. Alright, so I just had a look around the fort. It turns out all my mining designations have been completed, at least in the immediate area, so this should uh, begin. It should get right to it, and we can start moving some more of our materials and supplies down here. I also planned this out a long while ago, but this was intended to be a little crafting area. That way we don't have crafting stations just hanging out in the middle of this location. So maybe what I'll do is let them take care of this and then get started over here. I need to build some bridges and everything. So, you know what? Let's hit play. All right, so my miners are making their way down the stairs. I've had them dig out a another layer of stairs leading from the floors above. Some of them were just a little bit broken. This one in particular, or this one here in particular, somehow got ruined, and I'm not really sure how, so... I just needed to let them mine that, so that way now I can take this up. Yep, there we go. That should that should fix it. So it's gonna take them a little while to, to do this. Oh, the simple axes have been incorporated into my holdings, huzzah! It's gonna take them a little while to do this. Let's get started on the bridges over here. How do I keep opening that? That's my dog. So I was thinking that this was going to be the area right here that we connected the bridge to. Like, we have a, a single wide bridge here. I figure we can do that here as well. That's fairly straightforward. But I do need access to this block here and this block here. The simplest way to do it might be to open access right there. And, well, you know, I regret doing what I just did. That looks right. I just need to make sure they do not dig any further than I want them to. There. I think I should know how to put that back, right? All right, let's get that set up. Oh, look at all these requests to live here. We have a request for a temple and a priest from the Order of Irons. We've got a bard. Another bard. Denied, 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 denied. Ooh, a monster hunter. Well, denied. Okay, wait, okay. I actually wanted to look at that one. The Order of Irons has many worshippers and now requires a temple and a priest. Let's leave that there for a second. I've got the perfect spot for that. I was thinking over here would make some great temples. We could even, you know, cut it in half. We could put half a temple over here, half a temple over there. It's going to be great. All right, here we go. Let's accept it. The Order of Irons approved. And I've even set up a little zone right here and put it placed a meeting area. It's going to be the... Order of Irons. 
it was yellow too, the name. I think that means that a temple was requested in that location. Or, I mean, that a temple was requested. So they've got one now. They need a... A temple and a priest. So in order to become a temple, we need to raise the value from 407 dwarf bucks to 2,000 dwarf bucks. And, oh my gosh, 46 worshippers. No kidding. There are a lot of worshippers here. So flipping over here, same story. We needed to make a guild hall and, you know, we have a grand guild hall. So I think we've satisfied that request, hopefully. This one's also a grand guild hall, but I feel like it would tell me... The Constructive Hall, 21 members. Only members can visit if the guild is established. About citizens and long-term residents are allowed to attend. Because right now, a whole lot of nobody's in there. It makes me feel like I failed to carry out my petition somehow. So the water is still filling up this canal. It's still filling up the canal, but I have noticed my number of cancellations for green glass anythings have gone down. I spent some time... I spent some time setting up a number of these in the last episode. A number of glass furnaces on sand collection. Also, let's make sure we're only allowing one work order. And that should hopefully be collect sand always. Collect sand. Yes, this one is not a sand collection. Collect sand. Collect sand. Nothing's going on here. Okay, so I have a number of, of dwarves, mostly peasants, I think, taking care of that. I've also gone through and been more picky with my work orders. I assigned, I installed, I mean, dwarf therapist and saw that I had 58 idle dwarves and decided to give them jobs. So hopefully this means that a lot more is going to get done, including glass making. I hope that's the case. Something else I noticed yesterday, uh, well, it was my yesterday, when I recorded the last episode, I used a command to clear mud from my game in an effort to try and reclaim some FPS. You know what that ended up doing? It ended up deleting all the mud from my cavern lair, which is really unfortunate because this is where I was growing my food. And also my my veggies and things for alcohol. So I don't really know how to put the mud back except dump water on this. So that that's super unfortunate. I suppose the only thing left to do is just go down and maybe uncover some more mud. And maybe if we have some extra water like we do here, we can let that flood the caverns a little bit like we've done previously in other episodes. Not on purpose, kind of on purpose, but not exactly on purpose. And get the mud to, I guess, respawn from there. I'll also work a bit on my cavern project today, which is my intention to fortify this area here because I've had many a forgotten beast scale my walls and things. <laughs> As you can see right here, there's a forgotten beast corpse. So I am maybe making a tower up to this hatch here. We shall see. Oh no, we just had an alert that the human bard was found dead dehydrated. And I'm surprised to find them there of all places, but I'm fairly certain this was our dwarf that was causing trouble and was accused 
of a number of thefts. Looks like we also had a confession to another theft. It's Pelanova, but I don't want to kill Pelanova. Pelanova is a fantastic tavern keeper. I'm not sure how this dwarf, it's actually a human, ended up dying. I know that we had them in jail, I think. But the jail cells up here, how did they make their way dead dehydrated to the bottom of the staircase, I wonder? And would you look at that? I convicted Pelanova and they killed them. They killed my tavern keeper. I'm not sure who is administering justice in this fort, but they need to dial it back a little bit. <laughs> they need to dial it back. The Minotaur, Lefide, Theramyce, Ralavorisa. Ralavorisa has come a giant humanoid monster with the head of a bull. That sounds spooky. Um, so... It's not in the caverns, which I find <laughs> surprising. That... The... Lefied Dreams Callus, the Lurid Slaughterer. 369 years old. Nice, a professional mace man. Spooky! No relationships. They're an enemy of the entire world. Look at that. You were the world's enemy, Lefied. No thoughts, no memories. We have got a personality, though. He's a natural inclination towards language. A great feel for the surrounding space, a good feel for societal relationships, and a good feel for music, but he has poor empathy and little patience. He's utterly fearless when confronted with danger to the point of lacking common sense. He has an overinflated sense of self-worth. He is very ambitious, always looking for a way to better his situation. He can be very happy and optimistic, and generally uh, does not think before acting. He dislikes receiving advice, preferring to keep his own counsel. He often feels discouraged and acts impartially and is rarely moved to mercy. He lives a fast-paced life. He doesn't feel envious of others. He isn't given the flights of fancy and generally finds himself quite hopeful about the future. He tends to hang on to grievances. He's pleased by his own bullheaded appearance and talents and has a notable lack of perseverance. He often tells pointless stories when nervous. He personally doesn't respect a society that has settled into harmony without debate and strife, finds introspection to be a waste of time, and dislikes cooperation. He dreams of attaining a rank in society. Well, attacking my fort is definitely not how you go about attaining a rank in society, I'll put it that way. Well, okay. Let's see what they're up to. Alright, so here's our bullheaded visitor right there. Right here. Here's the entrance to my fort. I think it might be time to send out the squads. Although I don't know who is currently training, and I don't know who's who, and where they all are, but let's... I suppose we can station them... Like, right here. While our visitor approaches, the front door is wide open, so... You know, maybe we should shut it. On the other hand, we might just be fine. I wonder where you went. Here they are. I think they're chasing after this porcupine. Oh, nope, they're coming right to my front door. Whoa, they obliterated them. Obliterated. Much more happened in the blink of an eye than it looks. But the captain of the guard struck the minotaur in the lower leg. The minotaur fell. They punched, stabbed. Bat. 
slashed, bruised, slashed. This poor Minotaur, it didn't stand a chance. Didn't even stand a chance. The Minotaur passed out from exhaustion after having arteries opened and... They tore its skull right open. That was not as exciting as I thought it was going to be. Now, does their station order expire? Cancel an order. There we go. All right, time is passing, and we've gotten an alert that somebody is brawling under the influence. Hopefully this doesn't turn into a fort-wide scuffle like I've had it happen before. I, d I don't think so. I think we're okay. Ta-da! We've got two bridges queued for building right here and right there. I've even built some levers to go alongside them. I have spent some time having the dwarves smooth the tiles right beneath the bridge, because once a bridge is built, you cannot smooth the tiles that it lays on or anything underneath it. You cannot channel, dig, or smooth beneath a bridge. Fairly certain. Alright, so naming our mechanism, we have Great Hall West Bridge Lower. And I'm fairly certain that's my naming scheme. Great Hall South Bridge Left. Yeah, so this is going to be Great Hall West Bridge Lower. I know what I mean at least, right? All right, the other bridge is in. We're calling this one Grey Hall West Bridge Upper. Well, I think I might have called this one Lower. Nope, Upper. Okay, cool. So now we've got bridges on all four sides. I am kind of upset, though, that I did a single wide bridge on these and a double wide bridge here. I don't really think it matters very much, though, since these are not symmetrical on both ends. Look at our little dwarves go. They're digging, digging, digging. I've... I am trying my best to clean up this mess here. I've got dwarves carving bones. I've got dwarves spinning thread. Hopefully we'll clean this up soon. And now we can start implementing a stockpile right here. All right, the stockpile has been built. I've allowed finished goods, furniture, and siege ammo and gems down here. Up here, surprisingly, I've only allowed furniture, and look how much stuff we've got in there. I think the green glass is starting to take over. But I'm going to see how much this fills up before I decide whether or not we should put other things in the stockpile as well. Also, while this was occurring, we had a strange mood. Somebody has withdrawn from society! Alright, there we go. The stuff is flooding in. I've marked all these rocks for disposal because I actually have an infinite stockpile right here. And this is basically a dumping zone that is one tile wide. Or just, it's a dumping zone that consists of one tile. There we go. And once you begin to trash items, in air quotes, you trash them, you can put any number of items into this one tile. And so this is where I'm currently hauling all of my rocks. We just need to confirm that that is actually my dumping zone right now. Yes. 
Okay, it is. And it, it is enabled. And it's called Infinite Rocks. So we're going to let our dwarves start doing their hauling. Oh, and look at this. They're cleaning up the stockpile from above. All right, so I'm working on building that temple while waiting for some other things to conclude. Look at this long line of dwarves who have nothing to do but tromp on over this way and smooth things. How many dwarves do you think that is? That's probably like 40 dwarves. Look at them go. Look at them go! They're making quick work of this. One thing though, remember to smooth the floor before installing furniture because you can't smooth it afterwards. I have to remove all of this just to put it back. So I can smooth the tile beneath it. But you know, I figured while I'm at it, we may as well just smooth this whole section of the fort. There's a lot, a lot of smoothing jobs that have to be completed. But I don't want to overwhelm them by marking every little thing for completion or for smoothing, so... You know what, let's just do the whole floor. Watch this. I've actually already done quite a bit of it. <laughs> okay, great. See you all in like three years. No, they're actually going to be much quicker than that. Look, they've already finished this room. Good for you, dwarves. You're so quick. All right, let's see what's going on somewhere else in the fort. Oh, diplomacy! The humans have arrived. I kind of want to ignore them, but I can also sell off a bunch of this stuff that I've got floating about. Did they show up here? To my trade spot. There's our caravan. Oh! You claimed a furnace, but you haven't begun your work. Let's see, he's sketching pictures of cut gems. Pictures of stacked leather. Pictures of glass. Of a forest. Stacked leather. So you've got your glass. You've got your logs. You need cut gems. You need stacked cloth and stacked leather. Is that not just a bin full of cloth and leather? Perhaps we're out of it? Well, you know... We've got cloth. But you know what we don't have? Is leather. Alright, so I guess we need to trade with humans regardless. Alright, the caravan's arrived! The caravan has arrived. I... I am super excited that they're finally here because I wanted to know once and for all, can they enter the fort? I believe I've left them enough room in order to enter and make their way down here to our trade depot. But I am concerned about this little room, little bit of room right here. This is only two tiles wide. Don't know if they can make that turn. And if that's the case, I may just need to turn my ramp around the other way. <gasps> Here they are! They're turning? They aren't going to be able to do it, are they? Oh my gosh, they can! They can even move over the ramp tiles and count it as tiles that they can move their wagons across. Wow, I'm super satisfied by this. 
look, it's my first traders. Since I've moved my trade depot. There's so many of them. I no longer have my trade depot built right here. We've also got a lot of stuff on the surface. Seeds and more seeds and even more seeds. But you know, maybe one day they'll move those somewhere. All right, I guess I need to start moving things over too, don't I? All right, I've used the magic of YouTube recordings to transfer 209 items to this location, and I'm using this to get rid of all of my extra doors and tables and furniture, really, that doesn't match my my theme, what I'm going for. So ooh, we can install all these doors, too, and add that to the pile as well. And look at all these, too. Oh, and my coffins. Yes, I'm getting rid of coffins as well. Yeah, let's do this real quick. Let's uninstall them and add them to the pile. Do you think the traders are going to mind a couple used coffins? I did already mark a number of coffins for selling. Now that I've got, you no know, my green glass coffin business going. We don't need these lousy coffins anymore. So I'm currently um, digging up some bodies. Mm -hmm. I'm digging up some graves. And I'm going to sell these coffins. And I've already sold a few as well. Well, not yet. But I will. Alright, well that took forever because of all of these forbidden items for trading. I assume that's what this dark pink color means, is that these have a trade mandate against them. But I had to dig through each individual box and hopefully not accidentally trade any earrings. A couple might have slipped through the cracks, but you know, we're just gonna pretend that didn't happen. But we just made a massive trade. I'm glad that it's inside the fort rather than outside because there's gonna be a lot of hauling going down. Well, here I was just building the skeleton of my tavern and the forgotten beast Astan has come. A gigantic hairy caddisfly. It has a long swinging trunk and it squirms and fidgets. Its russet hair is long and straight. Beware the poison vapors. That sounds spooky. We got two uninvited guests. Oh, gross. It looks like it can fly. We got two uninvited guests in one day. You know what I might do? What I just might do... Is take down this outer wall. But also... Bring my military down here just to hang out. Because I imagine that Forgotten Beast is going to be visiting us soon. Right, so that should remove this outer wall, hopefully, which means this water might spread, make some more mud down here for us. Let's grab our squads. 
I'm going to give them a station order, like, right here. And... Set it and forget it. I'm sure that Forgotten Beast will make its way over to us in time. You know, this is a good time to take a look at how the water is flowing. So it's made its way over here. It's back to moving over our um, uh, water wheels here. And it is filling this area back up. And I've seen it moving throughout the fort. It's coming all the way up and all the way back down. And that's not where my collection is. It's made its way back here. <gasps> it did absolutely fill this, just like I was worried about. <gasps> it's filled to the brim. Ooh, and you know what it doesn't do? It does not leak out of here. <gasps> I totally thought it would. Hmm. Tricky, tricky. That's no good. <laughs> That's no good at all. Well, there still remains some extra room in our in our system here because we don't we don't have a full 7 depth throughout this loop. But we do in the basement. Or not the basement. I mean, I guess it's the water's basement. I absolutely thought the water would push up through here and leave the map. Hmm, the only way I can think to have that happen would be using a pump stack, although I don't have anything to power a pump stack. It's got to do it on its own. It goes down on its own, no problem. But it doesn't come up on its own. I absolutely thought water pressure would push this up and over. Well, today I learned... Oh, of course it wouldn't. I've, I've just thought about it. If that would work, then these little canals and things that I've dug here would overflow too. <gasps> A furnace operator has been found dead. But yeah, if using that same logic, if the water were to overflow, then we would have water overflowing throughout the entire fort. Why, oh why, are my dwarves out here? However, check it out! It is a Stan's corpse. I was... They make quick work of them. Good job, everybody. We've lost a couple dwarves. But besides that, we're alright. Everybody's dead. Why are my dwarves out here? Hmm. All right, here it is, one side of the tavern. What do you think? Um, maybe it's a little bit humongous? If I connect it to all of these pillars, including these ones up here, this is going to fill this entire central area with just a massive tavern. And I love it. We might need to put some doors in it. <laughs> we might need some doors, but this is amazing. They're also cleaning up this mess. Check it out. And it's because they've started throwing it all down here. And right here, too. The only problem is, I'm out of blocks. We need to make more glass blocks. Whoa, 
would you look at this? This dwarf that I forgot about created a green glass blocks he named Esh on Dalith Shagog Bungek. I completely forgot about them. I guess whatever they needed, I picked up from the trader. Lucky for them. I'm still just putting this all together. We've got a block problem. All right, so I took all those doors and all those coffins that I uninstalled and moved them to the trade depot and check this out. The trade mandate has ended. So now I can officially sell all these earrings that I've got a, a boatload of. Heck yeah! Oh no, it looks like my dwarves are still stuck down here. Because they cannot reach this doorway. They cannot reach it. The water above is too deep, so the dwarves in the caverns are beginning to die. <gasps> I didn't... Think about this when I. Oh no! My poor dwarves. What are they gonna do? This is passable. This is passable. They could come up to this floor if they wanted to. Are we still storing seeds here? Seeds. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's the problem. They can't open this hatch. This dwarf cannot get out of here. There's a duck! It seems like they're trying to go down, but they just can't do it. Maybe I should try taking this hatch out? So the water will just drain into the caverns. That's unfortunate. I'm fairly certain Whisper was a, a very, very good crafter. Poor Whisper. Gone like a whisper in the wind. Well, you know, it seems like I was very overambitious with saying I was going to get a tavern completed today during this recording. I've been recording now for, again, longer than I care to admit, and look how far I've gotten. I have one side of my tavern, although I have been playing around with the idea of building these walls in reflection of these walls right here. But instead of having this same structure on all ends, I was thinking if I could somehow turn it so that the front of the tavern was here. Uh-oh. And here. No, like here, right? Here and here. That would look really nice. Ah, oh, no! My sword's dwarf! We gotta get them out of there. Such folly. I didn't... I didn't realize what I was doing. I didn't realize what I was doing when I locked them here. Oh, did you just go down? Or did they go up? I think that dwarf might have gone up in that quick moment that they had. You 
No, I'm thinking this might be a good time to close these floodgates. However, I don't know if I have a lover for those floodgates. Connector access inner. Connector access outer. Loop to brook. Quad magma, magma gate. Okay, so I think that's these four gates plus these gates here. Show linked buildings. This one is not linked to anything. Brook Lava Fort Gate. Oh no, I don't think those are linked to anything. They are not. Why are they even there? I can't close them. Hmm, now that's tricky, all right. How am I going to get these dwarves out of the caverns? I think that should rescue them. Oops. Yeah. I like the idea of building the front ends to this tavern here and here. Because first off, I think that gives it a nice bit of space between this ramp thing that I've got going and this staircase here. But then we can also decorate the front of it a little bit. We can turn these into doorways where we have these pillars. Oh, it looks so cool from above, doesn't it? I think I want to make this a multi-lever, multi-level tavern. And then we can have little bridges that come from here, this platform, and connect to the tavern. Then we can have stairs that come down. Oh, I love it! I love it. I guess we're gonna have to, um... Call this video, actually, Building a Tavern Part 1. Because as it happens, this fort is a mess. Just take my word for it. If you decide to take on such an ambitious project as this, make sure that you spend the time building all of your add-ons to help your fort function as you go down. Don't do what I did. Dig out a big, vast hole in the ground and then dig go back up and dig out the rest of it where your dwarves are supposed to live because it's so much work for them to do all at once. Although they did manage to smooth this whole floor and they also managed to smooth this. While you were looking, I had them smooth all this extra stuff. Looks nice, right? I also saw while I was doing stuff and things, I've got some furniture made. Like glass cabinets. Quite a number of them. The next thing we can do is go back and tear out all this lovely furniture that we made and replace it with glass. Oh no. <gasps> Another dwarf found dead, dehydrated. The dwarves are dying all around you. Ooh, who's this? People are making their way down the stairs. It's because they... They made a rescue staircase. Look at them, they're so good. Rescue staircase! I am so sorry that the rest of you have perished down here. I'll make sure to install a nice coffin. You know what else I think we need to do? It's probably expand my <laughs> my tombs a little bit. This was actually a a vein of gems that I followed, and it came all the way this way. I just expanded it and tried to make it look a bit more natural, and built a bunch of coffins. I thought it would be enough for the whole fort, but I'm starting to think that's not the case. You must designate a tomb before this coffin will be used for burial. Yes, let's designate some tombs real fast. All 
Alright, not only did I designate some tombs, I also made some new spots to put tombs as well, because we've got lots of dead dwarves. So, I guess I'll have this hallway continue around somehow. Maybe we could... I don't know. Do some sort of wiggly thing with it. I liked that I had a natural a hallway that was dug out. I don't know that I can simulate this natural bend in the hallway. I'd love to be able to. But my weakness is anything that I build ends up looking symmetrical and boring like this. So boring, so ugly. No, I think it's beautiful. Oh, you know, when you weren't looking too, I also moved my workshops down here. I built some fancy new staircases that lead to nowhere because there's lava above here and my mining destinations were cancelled because hot. I did want to save and test it to see if lava is going to fall from the sky above. But this was intended to be a shortcut over to these workshops. Yep. Mm, I'm gonna test it real fast. All right, here we go. We're mining some uh, hot floors. I put it on destination one because I'm impatient. Now we just wait for our dwarves to show up. Who knows where they're coming from? Ooh, three dwarves. This is the moment where if I was streaming, I would say, Hey chat, you want to make a prediction? Is lava going to fall? on our heads from the floor above. Patiently waiting. Oh, it looks like our miners are here. Part of me hopes the lava does fall on them. It did not. Oh, wow. Okay, well now you know, if you have lava a floor above, it will not actually fall to the floor below. Never fear, dwarves, never fear. <gasps> Another dwarf was found dead, this time in the hospital. Stray cat's been found dead. Death runs rampant. The Grim Reaper is satisfied here. Deny, deny. The Foggy Guild has many members and now requires a guild hall. A farmer guild. The Foggy Farmer Guild. Okay, well, we can set this up really quick. I did designate this an area for a guild hall. I know they're huge. It, when you're digging them out, it doesn't feel as big as it actually is. All right, there we go. We've got the Saffron Prairies, the Farmer Guild Hall with, with 36 members. It is already considered a guild hall with a worth of 3656 dwarf bucks. I believe that might be considered satisfied. 
So I'm looking at the number of blocks that I have. The number is going up. It's going up fairly quickly. But for the purposes of my video, I think we're going to need a part two. It's unfortunate. I wanted to have this done today. But it's not happening. Sorry. I'll be sure to put a part one somewhere in this. So that way I don't bait you into a video where I don't actually build this tavern. But I can say I started. Yay! Some other things that we got done. We did a lot of digging. We did a lot of smoothing. We organized. Look at this. More organized than it was. We've moved some crafting stations over here to this side. And I can actually officially take you out. Destroy. Delete. Delete. You know, I've recently watched Death Note. And so I've started saying delete. Delete. Delete for everything. If you haven't seen Death Note, you probably don't know what I'm talking about. But you should watch it. That way you too can delete all your extraneous workshops. All right. I've got to go do some IRL things and be a human too. So we'll come back around to part two soon. One day I am taking a content creation vacation this week while these videos are airing. So part two, eventually, I super appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed this. Let me know how you like the format of these videos and if there's anything that you would like to see changed. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you next time. Goodbye, everyone. Dig safely and have fun.